you're a student, young professional, maybe even a content creator, you like the Apple ecosystem, and you're trying to decide, M2 MacBook Air or the 14 inch MacBook Pro. I own both, I'm only keeping one, and I'm gonna tell you which one I think is best. If you're a student, you're gonna have one set of needs, and if you're an entrepreneur or a content creator, you're gonna have a second set of needs. But before we get into all of that, let me first tell you about the pros and cons of each. In terms of appearance, both clearly from the same design language, they look more similar than different. Although I will say, MacBook Air in my eyes has a slight edge because number one, it's thinner, which I think makes it a little bit more aesthetic. And number two, it comes in more interesting colors, such as Midnight, but as you can see, Midnight smudges quite a lot, especially compared to Space Gray, but it doesn't bother me as much as it seems to bother most other reviewers. Next up is performance, and of course, this is obviously going to depend on your use case. For the overwhelming majority of users, the MacBook Air is gonna be more than adequate. Even if you're doing occasional photo editing or even light video editing, you're not gonna suffer with the MacBook Air, but if you're doing more intense video editing or 3D rendering, things like that, you will notice a difference and an improvement with the MacBook Pro. Now keep in mind, you can actually get the Air with a 256 gigabyte SSD, which I think is far too little. That's also a much slower drive compared to the 512 and up. So I got 512 on mine. 256 also fills up really fast, even if you use a lot of cloud storage as I do. So I would say get 512 or up and get 16 gigs of RAM at least, not eight. I find that for myself, music, email, some you know Safari tabs and Notion, that alone eats up a lot of RAM. And if I didn't have 16 gigs, I'd be suffering at eight. When it comes to battery life, slight edge to the MacBook Pro, but both give you over 14 hours. And I would argue it doesn't really matter because how often are you going to be using your computer without having access to an outlet for 14 plus hours? With 14 hours, you can generally use your laptop for the whole day, unless you're doing really demanding tasks, and then just charge it at night while you sleep. With regards to screens, we got the Liquid Retina XDR and the Liquid Retina. I don't think the difference is as big as most people would have you believe. I barely notice a difference. The main difference is actually HDR content and that's where this gets a lot brighter. But if you're like me and you don't watch much HDR content on your laptop, you're not really gonna notice a difference. This technically does have a higher resolution, 254 pixels per inch versus 224, but you're not gonna notice that. And on the keyboards, they both have scissor switches, but the MacBook Air keyboard isn't as nice to type on. There's less travel, which is I guess due to it being a slimmer design. And the MacBook Pro keyboard is a little bit better, but I wouldn't say it's unpleasant to use this. It's a only a slight marginal improvement for the MacBook Pro. And then finally, the portability. MacBook Air weighs 2.7 pounds, and the MacBook Pro is 3.5 pounds. Holding them in my hand, this one feels way more portable, even though this is 0.44 inches thick, and this is like 0.61 inches thick. When I say those numbers, they sound pretty close, but when I'm actually holding them and using them, this feels far more portable. Speakers are also noticeably different. The MacBook Air speakers are quite a bit tinnier than the MacBook Pro speakers. These ones have more bass, they're, they're more full. If you're gonna be using your computer for music or just playing things out loud more frequently, this one is definitely better. But again, when you're using the MacBook Air, you don't really feel like you're suffering from terrible sound quality. The one thing that is kind of annoying is that MacBook Pro has an SD card slot reader, whereas the MacBook Air does not. And that I do use pretty frequently because I record videos. I have three YouTube channels, Med School Insiders, this one, and Jabal and Cars, my latest car YouTube channel. And I offload footage with an SD card. So I need to use a dongle on the MacBook Air. Small annoyance. So which one am I keeping and which one would be best for you? So I'm actually keeping the M2 MacBook Air and I'm getting rid of the MacBook Pro. Now it came down to two main reasons. Number one is the portability. And the way that I use this is mostly on the go because I have a Mac Studio that I keep in my office and with my dual monitors and my whole setup, that's where I do the more heavy, intense work when needed. And when I'm on the go, I do really appreciate the smaller footprint and the weight savings with the MacBook Air. And the second thing is workflow. So I don't do much video editing apart from my OnlyFans content. All my YouTube and all that other stuff is done by my editor. <laughs> Boy. The other thing to keep in mind though, is if you do wanna use external displays, the MacBook Air only allows one external display, whereas you can do multiple with the MacBook Pro. So if I was using it as my only computer, I love having two large dual screen monitors. You can actually see that in my office store over here. Then I would go MacBook Pro, but again, just for portable use, MacBook Air is the winner. If you're a student, I think that for most of you, MacBook Air is gonna be more than enough. Again, get the 512 gigs and the 16 gigs of RAM, which I think runs around $1,600 versus this, which starts at two grand. You could argue, hey, you're only saving 20%, but I do think $400, it's a lot, especially for students. And I think those savings are definitely worth it. And if you're a content creator doing video editing on the regular, then yes, the MacBook Pro is gonna be a better fit. And there you have it, a tech review from a non-tech YouTuber. And the reason I wanted to do this is I felt like a lot of people that were making reviews 
between these two, when I was considering buying, you know, which one, I think that they overplayed the perceived deficiencies or inadequacies of the MacBook Air. And when I actually got it and started using it, I felt like the screen and the speakers and the little things here, they're like the smudges, they were just non-issues and I'm a lot happier with this. Plus I save money over the MacBook Pro. So hope that helps. Thanks for watching guys, much love, and I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> yeah, boy.